The legend of Lizzie Borden is one of the most famous crimes of all time. Inspiring multiple movies and Seattle resident James Cushing. James saw the legend of Lizzie Borden and drew a direct connection to his own life because he and Lizzie Borden were both under the control of their parents and he looked at her actions and saw a way to free himself of that. James Cushing proves that axe murderers don't just kill parents in movies. We've talked for a long time before we came in here to do this videotape, haven't we? What have we talked about? Well, everything. What was the big thing we talked about? Murder. A quiet neighborhood is being terrorized by a Lizzie Borden-like killer. How about the house in West Seattle? Yeah, I walked in there. I just throw stuff on. Did you go upstairs? Yeah. Did you see him? Uh huh. They saw me too, wasn't it? <laughs> Some people seem to have all the luck. But Washington resident James Cushing isn't one of them. Before he is even born, his life is filled with disadvantages. While James's mother was pregnant, she caught German measles. And German measles can cause a number of disabilities in children. His mom noticed at an early age that there seemed to be something wrong with him. He was slow to sit up, crawl, and his coordination was off. James also contracts spinal meningitis, possibly causing further damage. Everything was slightly delayed. It would have made him fall into the mild cognitive impairment diagnoses. While growing up, James knows his life is different from other kids. Why don't you tell us about uh, what life was like back when you were a young man? We moved from town to town. We, my you know, mom got divorced. Man, the world, my dad just took off. Everything was just going to pot. There's nothing stronger than wanting to belong. For James to have his father leave is just another way of saying, you're not worthy. I don't want you. James's mother is left to care for the family. And soon realizes her son is too much to handle alone. Remember when you were about 13, you told me that you had some trouble with a man in the neighborhood? Yeah. I walked into his home. Is that his whole couch? Drapes? Pillows were on fire. What for? I was upset. He was a troubled young man. Detective Bob Jebo recalls the first time he spoke to James Cushing. Rather than putting him through the criminal justice system, um, he, because of his obvious mental problems, go to the Rainier School. Rainier School is a state school for the uh, developmentally disabled. At Rainier School, he seemed to be pretty happy. He did well. He was quite friendly. But these are the people that are really heavy, heavy care not only just mental, but physical care. And he didn't fit into the physical care part of it. As a teenager, James is soon transferred to a halfway house. But the results are disastrous. And that, that caused a lot of stress, didn't it? Yeah. You probably would have been better off just staying at the school. I think it would. The staff thought uh, he was adjusting well. They also noticed that he had kind of a weird side. Change is very difficult for a lot of people. And for James, change was something unpleasant, unexpected, and problematic. Staff changes literally make him spiral out of control. Uh, the next thing I know, I'm upset, staying out late. Breaking windows every night. Apparently, he set fire to the group home. He was charged criminally 
because the fingerprints were entered into what's called APHIS, Automatic Fingerprint Identification System. But despite his angry outburst, when James turns 21, he is allowed to leave the group home. For a while, James lives on the street. Do you have a sick of the witch kick? Sometimes I try to sleep on benches and that's rough. Eventually, his mother tracks him down and brings him home. But the reunion is turbulent. He spent a lot of his time just sitting around. He was dirty and messy and wouldn't clean up after himself. We have a very bad dynamic between a mother and her disabled son, where she wants him to get help. And her son doesn't want that help. James looked at it as his mother was nagging him. Would you say that the main thing to get you upset is your mother, or are there other things that yeah, get you upset? Yeah, just here's our Just Do you love her? I try to love her. I really do, but she's just things that get me upset. And that nagging him started to needle him to have anger issues against his mother. Who's there? Who's there? Hello? Hello? What? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? When do the voices start, Jack? I know, but I, I am at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. James. 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 Did they sound like your mom's voice? No, they sound real different. Is it a man's voice? No, it's all a different voice. He would carry on conversations with himself. Hot? Are they gonna catch me? Are they gonna Carrying on a conversation with somebody that's not there. I mean, it's frightening. When we look at someone who's talking to themselves, that has anger issues, that's homeless, that is not taking care of their hygiene, he's clearly decompensating. The more his mother tries to control James, the more James becomes uncontrollable. Although he doesn't want supervision, this is an individual that clearly needed supervision. Jim lashes out at his mother by destroying her house. Get out! James throws garbage around the house. He slashes her furniture. He breaks her windows. But the worst is yet to come, especially after James discovers a TV movie that will seal his fate forever. Jim watched a made-for-TV movie called The Legend of Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden went to trial in 1892 for murdering both her father and stepmother. In The Legend of Lizzie Borden, Lizzie steals an ax, takes off all her clothes so she won't get blood on them, and goes in for the kill. She's tired of being controlled by her overbearing stepmom. And that's when James gets an idea straight from the movies. <laughs> he decides to murder his own mother, just like Lizzie. Here was a woman who was being controlled, and she was reacting in rage-fueled revenge in the form of murder. His whole life, in his mind, has been rules, rules, rules and how people try to control him. He strips off all his clothes and grabs a weapon. Lizzie removed her clothes because due to the amount of blood that would be splattered, she didn't want it to get all over her clothes. And that made sense to James, so he thought, okay, I'll take my clothes off too. He sneaks into his mother's room while she is fast asleep. His mindset was really irrational. Here was the one person who loved him and wanted to help him, yet he wanted to destroy her. Just like Lizzie Borden, he prepares to strike. But nothing ever happens like in the movies. No! 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 James Cushing is seconds away from stabbing his own mother to death. James is tired of feeling that his mother is out to control him. 
He wanted to be free. He wanted to be his own man. He didn't want to feel that he was like a puppet on a string being controlled by his mother. He wants revenge, like the main character in his favorite movie, The Legend of Lizzie Borden. When Lizzie's pushed to the breaking point by her controlling stepmother, she decides that she has to kill her. After watching the Lizzie Borden movies multiple times, uh, Jim starts becoming obsessed about all the anger, violence, and rage of the movie. James takes off his clothes and prepares to strike, just as Lizzie Borden does in the movie. Jim told us that he took his clothes off because he didn't want to get blood on them. And you don't get along with your mom very well, do you? One time I wanted to kill her. I just couldn't take care of it anymore. And I have her. She was asleep, and he is, is naked, standing over her with a knife. And she wakes up. <laughs> His mother opened her eyes. She saw her son standing there, totally nude, uh, staring at her. She screamed. Ah! James! James! Stop! James! Put the knife down! Ah! That's, I think, what frightened him away. And he did not kill her. Mrs. Cushing knew that her son needed more help than she could provide. The next morning, James's mother begs the state for assistance. So she took him to a mental facility. He was ordered by the judge to have no contact with his mother for 90 days while he was getting outpatient treatment. Out on the streets, the voices in James's head scream at him to create chaos and fear. Uh, we talked about the voices before. Yeah. They Sometimes I can really hear them, and sometimes they're always in my head. To me, James is a walking time bomb. This is someone who has no empathy, no remorse, and blames society along with his mother and any stranger on the street for all his problems. Without any supervision, there is no telling what James will do or how far his madness will go. Jim went to a local park in Seattle with a switchblade. I'm done! I'm done! I'm done! And threaten people in the park with that switchblade. Hey! Hey! Ah! Please! 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 Please. Die? And he eventually cornered a woman and told her that he was going to kill her. I'm gonna stab you! Please! The cops were called and they showed up pretty quickly. <laughs> Luckily, he was stopped just in time for now. James is taken to another medical facility for a psychiatric evaluation. But shortly after, he's released. It's very crazy that Jim was in and out of mental institutions and now is threatening someone with a knife and nobody seems to be doing anything about it. We all need structure. We all need to feel that we're leading purposeful lives. James was no different, but with his antisocial personality, he went against the norms of society. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do. But in truth, he really needed supervision. He really needed support to guide him to make the right choices. Once again, the voices kill in his head tell him kill, to kill, kill someone, kill, like his kill. idol, Lizzie Borden. Kill, 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 kill. kill. Well, on that particular night, was there something that, that got you upset so the voices were worse than normal? Yeah, black guard over in that west lake. You got some, you got some problems with the guard over at the West Lake Mall? Yeah. He had been in the West Lake Mall. and the security guard took a knife that he had. Once again, James's plan is interrupted. Uh, Jim thought that that was his property and, and why, sh why should that guy take my knife away? And that upset him. James yearns for retaliation as the voices in his head urge him to kill. James, who's angry at his mother, 
angry at the security guard, angry at the world, angry at anyone who he comes into contact with. The madman is desperate to silence his mind, and that's when he sees his next opportunity. In a Washington neighborhood called Queen Anne, James Cushing finds the perfect instrument for a copycat crime. In Queen Anne, there are a lot of older houses with a number of fireplaces. So it only makes sense that people had axes near their wood pile. There was an axe left outside at a neighbor's home a, a few blocks up the street. When he found that axe, it all seemed to come together. The anger he carried around with him, the blame, the need to revenge, the watching of the Lizzie Borden film. And now, right in front of him, is this axe that he can use as a weapon. In The Legend of Lizzie Borden, Lizzie kills her stepmother and father with a stolen axe. James stole an axe because that's what Lizzie did in the film. Now James is on the hunt, and this time, he won't be stopped. On that night, were there voices in your head? They were always but they never leave. What were the voices telling you to do that night? Kill. Yeah. Ah! James Cushing is a deadly man on a copycat mission. Ah! James, put the knife down! He tried to kill his mother, and he just couldn't go through with it. He tried to kill somebody with a switchblade. It didn't happen. James may have been unsuccessful before, but when he sees an ax left in a neighbor's yard, it's all the motivation he needs to kill like his favorite movie character, Lizzie Borden. James liked this film because he thought that it almost mirrored his life. He felt a connection to Lizzie Borden. James fantasized about killing someone with an ax after repeatedly watching Lizzie Borden's film. And now, with the weapon in his hands, he's ready to make someone his first victim. Jim was walking down Bigelow Avenue, swinging uh, ax as he looked for unlocked doors. He then went up the alley, trying doors as he went till he came to Geneva's unlocked door. 63-year-old Geneva McDonald has no idea a predator is standing right outside her window. Had you ever met this woman before? No. Did you even know that she lived in that house by herself? No. Geneva lived alone. She was married, but had gotten divorced. Her daughter had, had uh, moved out. Geneva was a lovely woman. She was an avid gardener. Her garden was her pride and joy. What made you pick Geneva's house? I don't know, it just was there. For James, it doesn't matter who it is because he hates all people. It's not just his mother. It's not just a security guard. His hatred has become so pervasive that it's anyone. It's anyone that he comes into contact with, anyone who gets in his way. How did you get into Geneva's house? They don't lock the doors, so you just walk in. You don't even have to break a window. What did you do once you were in there, Jim? Walked upstairs. What side of the bed were you? This side. She was on this side. I just said, Jesus Christ, I got excited. Four or 
already start coming out on her face. Did you see it? Oh, oh yeah. For James, he seemed to enjoy the fact that he was producing blood from an innocent victim. Like Lizzie Borden, James isn't willing to show any mercy. He grabbed the, the scissors that were right nearby and, and stabbed her a few more times with those. <coughs> Make sure that she was dead. Why did you stab her with the scissors? All he cared about was killing and then getting the reaction. The lust, the thrill. I'm in control and I can kill whoever I want. Did you hurt her at all? I killed her. This wasn't just a happenstance. He intended to kill her and, and didn't stop until he was sure that she was dead. After you killed her, did you do anything else in the house before you left? I just took the money, her jewelry, shoved it in my pocket. And then James does exactly what Lizzie Borden did after she murdered her parents. There was evidence of some food being consumed downstairs in the kitchen. This is an individual who has no long-term goals that's totally ruled by his impulse. Did you lay down anywhere? Yeah, right in bed. He went in the guest room and laid down and took a nap. Your victim is in the room right next door, and you're taking a nap. In James's favorite movie, The Legend of Lizzie Borden, Lizzie also continues living in the same house where the murder occurred. It's weird because Lizzie doesn't run or hide after the murders. She just cleans herself up, stays right there, knowing that there's a dead body not very far away. The next morning, James flees the scene, but his copycat crime is about to be discovered. Whole day went by, and then it was the next day that one of her co-workers came to the house because they'd called and could get no response and discovered her body. The scene is a ghastly sight, even for seasoned police officers. News of Geneva's death spreads like wildfire through the Queen Anne community. At the time that I was living in the Queen Anne area, James Cushing was on the loose. We didn't know who was doing this, and we didn't know anything about this person. You didn't know if he was just roaming around. You never knew what his next move was going to be. Even the police are having trouble nailing down a suspect. The partial fingerprints taken from the scene aren't detailed enough to match any that are in the national database. And with no eyewitnesses putting James at the scene, Geneva's killer could be anyone. It was plastered all over the newspaper. They didn't know who it was. They didn't know why. And they didn't know if he was going to be out doing it again. While the city is crippled with fear, James hides in plain sight. Jim's pattern was he would sleep in a doorway during the daytime and roam at night. James is an incredibly dangerous person because he has no fear. He has no remorse for the murder he has committed. And there's every reason to believe that he will commit another murder. He'll continue to kill because in his mind, that is his revenge, and that is a release 
for the pain and suffering he seems to feel internally. A desperate man with nothing to do, James decides to fill his time with another murder. I don't think Jim had any sense of consequences. He lived in his own world, and at this point, I don't think he knew right from wrong. It really is just who left their door open, who got in his way, random act of murder to satisfy his own lust to kill. James Cushing is a copycat killer searching for his next kill. Most people kill based on an emotion or a need. James seemed to kill based on internal rage, had nothing to do with the people he chose to kill. Inspired by the movie The Legend of Lizzie Borden, James murders his first victim with an ax. Lizzie Borden kills her father and her stepmother uh, with an ax that she stole because her father is controlling and her stepmother is trying to come in between her and her inheritance. And now James is killing like Lizzie Borden, but even more terrifying, no one is safe. James Cushing didn't seem to favor one sex over the other. What he seemed to look for was an unlocked door. And whatever person was there, that was the person he was going to attack. It was terrifying. Back in the same neighborhood as his first murder, James finds another unlocked door. Inside the home is a man named Ian Warren. Ian Warren was a man who was visiting some friends and was going to be a guest overnight. They had quite a bit of beer to drink, and he decided he would spend the night at his friend's house rather than uh, driving home. So Ian was getting ready to go to bed, and what he didn't know is that James Cushing was already in the house. Were you trying to kill him? Uh -huh. Told you to do that. Jim enters the house, finds Ian Warren asleep. James pulls out a knife and attacks. All of a sudden, somebody was trying to stab him with a knife. Ian was bleeding profusely, and Jim, for a short period of time, stood there smiling like he was proud of it. After he got his hand hurt, was there a lot of noise then? Yeah, he was screaming. What was he screaming? Blood. But unlike Geneva, Ian could fight back, and he did. <laughs> When Ian started fighting back, that's when Jim thought he better get out of there. Did you take anything in that house? No, I didn't. Ian Warren had several stab marks. It was bleeding profusely, but he wasn't dead. In that situation, he had fears. He knew the individual he attacked could attack back. James retreated. Although he runs, James isn't ready to give up on his copycat crime spree. Even after all this happened, this did not stop him. In fact, he enjoyed all the publicity and the fear that was created in this neighborhood. In The Legend of Lizzie Borden, after Lizzie kills her parents, she revels in the spotlight. Lizzie liked all the attention that she was getting. Lizzie asked her sister why everyone is being so mean to her. Her sister's response is that Lizzie's special because the police have accused her of this and now everyone is paying attention to this trial. It's like a spectacle. Off screen, James continues to stir up fear. Jim uh, breaks into houses, ends up vandalizing them, steals their belongings, including food. Over the next few days, James roams the streets at night, searching for unlocked doors. One could ask themselves, why doesn't he stop? 
but yet that was the only thing he was successful in his life at doing. That's the crazy part about this, is his success was assaulting society. Jim writes crude, threatening messages on the wall and just terrifies them. On one of their walls, he wrote the killer was bad. He also wrote F you. And parts of the neighborhoods, the cops went around door to door. telling people to buy a dog, get a blurt girl alarm installed, and above all, keep your windows and your doors closed and locked. We didn't know where he was going to do it next. James feels unstoppable, more powerful than ever. I think he enjoyed the fact that people, society, was in fear of him. Now he was the person in control. He wasn't the outsider looking in. He was the person that everybody feared. James and Lizzie seemed to enjoy being in the spotlight. James certainly loved uh, seeming like he was above the law, seeming as though he had control. That night, James tries to enter several homes, but to his surprise, all the doors are locked. But he won't let that stop him from possibly committing another murder. He looked inside a living room window and saw a woman. Tom, it's ready. He tried the door. The door was locked. But he decided, no, I'm going to get in this house anyhow. The hairs on the back of her neck were standing up. She perceived that somebody was peering in her window. And she looked out and saw this shadowy figure looking in her window. She screamed for her brother, who also lived in the house. Oh who is it? I got it. Stay here. I got it. Okay. And while she was calling the police, the brother uh, went outside carrying a camera and tried to chase Jim. James tries to get away, but this time he's not so lucky. Somebody just took the picture by surprise. And where were you when they took the picture? You told me I was in the yard. I was walking on the street. Also, surprise! The next thing I know, a flash was in my eyeballs. Oh, I wanted to let you know that I took a picture and I was about ready to cream the guy right now. Instead, James vanishes into the night, but his copycat murdering spree is far from over. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. So, she's a killer and sees what she did, feels nothing. I think there's something very powerful about that, and yet again, that's exactly how James felt. Like Lizzie, there's no telling what James will do next or who he'll try to kill. James Cushing is the one man police are desperate to capture. The only problem, they have no idea who he is. James has broken into several homes, killing one woman and attempting to murder several others. The local media dubs him the Queen Anne Axe Murderer. His weapon of choice, a direct nod to his favorite movie, The Legend of Lizzie Borden. Lizzie kills her parents by hacking them with an ax. The police quickly track her down, and she is accused of murder. But when it comes to James's crimes, the authorities have been at a loss for a suspect. Until now. In the last attempted attack, the homeowner's brother was able to take a picture of James as he fled the scene. He snaps this picture of this uh, male, pretty dirty looking, big glasses, a real surprised look, very distinctive. He was able to get away from this person, and he didn't know that the photo itself was kind of grainy. 
But he was at a point where he didn't care. There is seemingly no way to stop James Cushing. That's kind of hard sometimes to track down a homeless person. They had this vague photo of him. It wasn't good. James probably thought he was invincible, that he would just continue to do what he did. And society reacted with so much fear, and the police seemed incompetent, at least in his mind, that he could continue for as long as he wanted. And then, a real break in the case. Almost six months after James killed like Lizzie Borden, police match his fingerprint. The ridge detail down into the palm that was at the Geneva McDonald murder site was uh, positively compared to the ridge detail up into the fingertips at a burglary over in West Seattle. And these fingertips, the prints here, were APHIS quality that could be put into the computer, and that made the match to uh, Jim Cushing's uh, fingerprint card from setting on fire of the, the group home. Now that authorities have their suspect, a statewide manhunt ensues. The neighborhood had every reason to be scared. There had been a random killing of an innocent woman. Well, the precautions I took was always looking behind your shoulder, um, being very aware of your environment. Of course, locking your doors, which I've always done anyhow. But you'd go to a grocery store, you'd go to a restaurant in the area, and people were talking about this. It was a big deal. They search everywhere for James and talk to anyone who might know where he's hiding. The next day, they find him at a local diner. We walked in, and he was sitting on a stool, didn't pay much attention to us, and we just basically came in and uh, carried him out. He basically asked me, uh, I'm not going to have to sleep outside again, am I? And then, no, Jim, you're not going to sleep outside again. Going to jail was an improvement for the way his life was. When James was arrested, he was very calm and non-confrontational. James said, what took you so long? One could look at that as saying that that individual wanted to be arrested, that he knew that he was committing crimes, and that he needed to be caught. James is brought into the station for questioning. There, he gives a full confession. Mostly on me, because they don't know what to do with me, so they let me walk around the streets all night long. I sleep during the day. People pick on you during the day? Everyone. Jim, can I ask you something? Why? When you hurt Geneva, or killed Geneva, and hurt the man up on Queen Anne, did you think that was a wrong thing to do? At the time, I was so mixed up and so upset, I didn't know. What else? Like Lizzie Borden, James is found competent to stand trial. To everyone involved, he doesn't look like the menacing killer they've been chasing for months. James' appearance and not seeming like your typical killer, certainly an ax murderer, uh, it, it had a lot of the feel of Lizzie Borden's crime because at that time, I think um, murders, especially with that amount of gore and coldness, weren't associated with women. But will James Cushing's outcome be the same as his murderous icon? Lizzie is ultimately found not guilty. Lizzie denies that she ever committed the murders and never admits to it and lives out the rest of her life in the house where she killed her father and stepmother. Unlike his movie icon, James is found guilty and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He had been in and out of the mental health system almost his whole life, and this was the end result. So they wanted to make sure that there was no more. Back in Lizzie Borden's days, 
There weren't, as a rule, things like outpatient mental facilities. Um, and if you did go to a hospital for the insane, that was a really big deal. Uh, mental illness was just not really addressed. Where nowadays, it's a different story. And even though we have those type of facilities, James Cushing fell through the cracks. From the beginning, James blamed his mother for all his problems. Jim actually hates his mother, or so he says. He blames her for all his failures in life, and he was full of rage. And um, he wanted to not be underneath her influence. He just wanted to feel free. But Jim's mother loved him uh, despite all his problems, but she just did not want to tolerate his awful behaviors. In the end, James Cushing might be more legendary than Lizzie Borden, at least in the Seattle, Washington area. James had resentment and he had internal rage and he had an inability to cope and watching the Lizzie Borden film gave him the roadmap on how he should direct that rage towards innocent people in the Queen Anne neighborhood. When asked what they could have done differently, James says, lock your doors. A lock might keep James Cushing out, but his actions have left an indelible mark. <laughs> Lizzie Borden and James were similar in that they both lacked empathy. A random act of murder that James committed is really quite rare. The murder committed by Lizzie Borden is actually more common. If James could keep going, if James hadn't been arrested and kept going, 